this is a meeting of my mineral club, the MKA, or Antwerp Mineralogical Society. We are a club of mineral collectors and we have several active work groups. Gemology, the awaiting, engineering, micromounting, mineral photography, zeolites and fluorescent minerals. I lead both the work groups engineering and fluorescent minerals. My name is Axel Emmerman and I am the guy with the UV lamp. I'm about to make a discovery. One of our member dealers has a nice mangano and calcite with him which fluoresces as soon as I hit it with some of my shortwave UV. Nicely red. My club, the MKA, or Antwerp Mineralogical Society, has quite a few members who are interested in fluorescent minerals. So we decided to invest some funds in just that field. Now, what makes minerals glow? In many cases, there are some trace elements present that we call activators. Those actually uh, make the minerals fluoresce. We make it our cause to find out which of these elements are responsible for this fluorescence. Naturally, all research starts with um, analyzing the fluorescent emission of these uh, fluorescent minerals. We needed a tool to do that. After browsing the market, our choice fell on the Ocean Optics USB 4000 fluorescence spectrometer, which we ultimately bought. This is the Ocean Optics USB 4000. Uh, the complete device fits snugly in my hand. It's no bigger than this. We had it custom fitted with a um, 50 micrometer slit, entrance slit, and a cylindrical lens uh, to enhance the capture of ultraviolet on the sensor. We use it with an optical fiber and a collimator lens to collect the signals that we get from the fluorescent. First of all, we need an ultraviolet source um, to excite our minerals. Personally, I like to use LED sources, ultraviolet or blue light, because they have a very clean spectrum with only one spectral line. If you use mercury vapor lamps, um, the spectrum of our uh, fluorescent emission gets contaminated with all kinds of uh, spectral lines from mercury. I'm going to aim this at one fluorescent rock. There you go. And immediately we see that the rock starts fluorescing rather fiercely. So this actually is the emission we are going to measure with our Ocean Optics USB 4000 spectrum. As a measuring cell we use a very sophisticated device often also referred to as a dark blue plastic box. I lined it with black felt inside so there would be no internal reflections. I'm now going to do a setup and then we'll have a look inside. Okay, the mineral, the UV source and the optic fiber are all installed inside our uh, sophisticated measuring cell. I now just have to put the lid on so and we are good to measure. Okay, 
I'm first of all I'm going to uh, measure a dark spectrum to eliminate all errors and artifacts of the spectrometer so that we get a clean uh, undisturbed spectrum. I do this a few times to make sure that the curve is essentially flat and then I push the button uh, scope minus dark. So now we are actually measuring the spectrum. I insert the optic fiber and we instantly get a nice spectrum as you can see a very nice spectrum which uh, obviously shows the activator of this uh, scapolite mineral which is the disulfide ion we can recognize it by the numerous um, oscillation peaks of this typical activator. I'm going to show you a few more examples um, by means of still photography and uh, spectra that I record, recorded uh, earlier. Thanks to our USB 4000 uh, spectrometer we were able to explain the fluorescence of this Spanish apatite um, we discovered that it has copious amounts of samarium, europium, dysprosium and other rare earths also this shilite from China fluorescing blue under shortwave and red under mid-range ultraviolet um, appears to contain lots of lanthanoid elements such as samarium, europium, dysprosium, neodymium and others. The Ocean Optics 4000 USB gives us quite an advantage when looking at fluorescence. We see things much clearer now.